Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to Al-Afaq International School Jeddah Virtual Learning Classroom. With you, Ms. Dina Badawi, biology teacher for grade nine. Our lesson today is chapter 11, lesson one, the work of Gregor Mendel. Instructions, lesson to the lesson explanation. Open your book, page 308, 309, 310, and 311. Standards LS1A, structure and function. What's the structure of DNA and how does it function in genetic inheritance? Objectives, describe Mendel's studies and conclusions. Describe what happens during segregation. Okay, let's start our lesson today. And our lesson is talking about the work of Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel, can you see this uh, slides, girls, the PowerPoint? The work of Gregor Mendel? Yes, it's clear. Again, it's clear, yes? Okay. Mendel, our objective again, describe Mendel's studies and conclusions about inheritance, describe what happens during segregation. Mendel is a scientist who had a garden of bees. Inside his garden, there were bees growing. He notes that these bees have certain characteristics. Some of these bees are green, some are yellow, some are short, some are tall, some are um, um, smooth, while others are constricted and constricted and so on. So Mendel wants to make an experiment. He will make this experiment on these bees on these bees so we name the objects that we uh, that scientists make experiment on it a model system a model system bees are very good model system why because bees are um, they are small and easy to grow their results are convenient uh, uh, they can be included on every on all organisms even the human beings so anything that has this criteria, we have to name it model system. So when Mend uh, will do or did his experiments on these bees, this is the model system for his studies, okay? Um, you have to know that these bees are, the bees flowers are called self-pollinating plants. This plant is called self-pollinating plant. Why these flowers or this plant is called self-pollinating? Because the pollen of the bee is present at the same flower with the, with the female organ. Yani the male organs and the female organs are present in the same flower. Some flowers are contain only male parts, while other flowers contain only female parts. And if this is the case, um, we have to, uh, trans to, to move the pollens from the male part to the female part for, for fertilization to occur. You remember fertilization? Fertilization means when the male part or the male uh, sperm join the female egg, they will give an embryo. This is fertilization. Male sperm plus female egg will give or will be joined together to give what? To give the embryo, okay? But in case of bees, Mendel found that the bees are self-pollinating flowers self-pollinating flowers that this flower has the male part and the female part in one flower. So they will not need uh, the help of uh, insects or the help of uh, butterflies or the help of bees or the help of wind to carry the pollen with the sperm to another place. The pollen is present at the same site, at the same flower with the female part. So it's just will move until reaching the female part, the pollen contains the male sperm, the, the sperm. This pollen will move 
till it reaches the female part of the flower of the same flower and then the sperm will join what will join the egg okay to give what to give the embryo so in case of bees it's called self pollinating flower okay girls it's called self pollinating flower and mendel found that this bee flower will give an offspring that is typical or genetically identical to its parent. This bee flower, each bee flower is considered a single parent, a single parent. And it doesn't need another parent to fertilize it, okay? Because this single parent has both the male parts and the female parts at the same place, the male part and the female part in the same flower. So the offspring will be the same or the offspring flower will be the same as the parent flower. The offspring, the offspring bee will look the same as the parent bee, okay? But some of them, some bees flowers are, uh, um, as I said, green, some are yellow, some are uh, short, some are tall, and so on, okay? But he found that the green bee will, also, will only give green bees, and the yellow bee will only give yellow bees. Short bees sh will give only short bees. Uh, long bee will give only long bees, and so on. So he decided to make an experiment. He said, what about if I take the pollen from one bee flower, which is, uh, say, the yellow bee flower? I will take it from the yellow bee. I will take the, the pollen from it and let it join the female part of the green bee. So he will make what? He will make, he will make a cross-pollination. He will make what? cross-pollination, not self-pollination. Self-pollination if the female and male parts are together, are present together in the same flower. But cross-pollination, if he will take the pollen from a 1B flower and let it join, of course the pollen has the sperm, yes? Inside it, he will let it join or fertilize the egg, which is the female, uh, the female cell in the other flower. So he will give another offspring. He will give another offspring, which is called hepride. This is called hepride. Created. Okay, this hepride is created from cross of true breeding individuals. The true breeding, like the green one, the green bee, or the yellow bee, okay? He will make cross-pollination cross for them to give a hybride one, a created from cross of true breeding individuals. Okay, girls? And you have to know what's the meaning of trait. Trait is the specific characteristics. For example, when I, I say that the color of the seed of the bee, of the bee seed is green, this is its specific characteristics. Its trait is green color. If it's yellow, its trait is yellow color. Plant height, this is a trait. Plant shape, this is a trait. Uh, uh, pot color, this is a trait. Pot shape. Seed coat, all of these are traits. These are the characteristics, okay? So what happened when Mendel made the cross-pollination? Let's see. When he made the cross-pollination, it's like this. Again, the male part, this is the male part inside the flower, and this is the female part. Of course, the male part produces what? Produces the pollen. And inside the pollen, there is the sperm, yes? And the female part, which has the ovary, produces what? Produces the egg cell. When the sperm 
join the egg, this means fertilization, and they will give the embryo, okay? Or the seed, it's okay? Okay. What Mendel did that he uh, made cross-pollination. He brought the um, pollen of one flower and let it join the female part of another flower. And of course, he for this female part, for this flower, he want to stop its self-pollination. So at first he cut its male part. He cut the male part of this flower. So it has only the female part. And he transfers or move this pollen from, the, from one flower to uh, the female part of another flower and let them join together. What did he see? His experiment shows seven traits, shows what seven traits. And we said trait is the specific characteristic. This trait is the number one, the seed shape, seed color, seed coat, bot shape, bot color, flower position, plant height. Okay, these are the seven, the seven characteristics that Mendels wanted to see what will happen when he did the cross-pollination. So if we talk about the seed color, let's talk about the seed color. This is easy and you can get it quickly, inshallah. The seed color. He found that some seeds, as I said, he found that in his garden, some seeds of the bees are yellow while others are green. And of course, this yellow will give off spring yellow because it's self-pollinated, yes? And this green will give only off spring green because it's self-pollinated. It's okay until now. So Mendel decided to make cross-pollination, to make what? Cross-pollination, to take the pollen of the yellow, let it join the pollen of, uh, let it join the female part or the egg of the green. It's okay? What happened? What happened? He found that the first generation, and of course, not only for the seed color, for the seed shape, one rounded and one wrinkled. When he let cross-pollinate them, he found that there is a generation found. Let us first say that we will give a simple P, P, capital P, for the parent generation, for the parents, okay? And F1 for the first individual for the first um, generation of the offspring. F1 for the first generation of the offspring. Okay, this is the parent, P, parent, and F1 for the offspring. Okay, here he is describing, it's okay, we can describe, we can talk about the height. We can talk about the plant height, okay, tall and short. Again, he cross pollinate the tall plant of the bees with the short plant of the bees. But this one was true breeding and this one was true breeding and self pollinate okay? It's okay, girls, until now, he will take one tall parent with another short parent. He cross pollinate them. He brought the sperm of the tall parent, let it join the, uh, the egg of the short bee or of the short parent, it's okay? Are you following girls? Are you following grid yes. nine? Yes. 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 It's okay. Yes, teacher with you. Excellent. This, the parents, one is tall or one was tall and the other was short, yes? It's okay, girls. Now, what happened when he cross-pollinated them? He found that the first generation of offspring, the F1, offspring has two tall offspring. So the short trait disappears or the short characteristic disappears. Why? He found only the tool. Type. He made another experiment. He crosses them again to give F2 generation as we are talking about the plant height. But in this case, I will not take the parents which were true breeding, no. He took the offspring which was cross-pollinated before, yes? He will take the, this tall one and this tall one of the offspring, of the offspring, 
and cross pollinate them. What happened? What did he see? He found that when he took this tall one and this tall one from the offspring, from the first generation, yes? He found that it will give us or it gave him three tall generation in the second generation, three tall ones and one short. So the short characteristic reappears again. It reappeared again here. But in the ratio of one to three or three to one, three for the tall and one for the short. It's okay until now. Top. What what the conclusion did did Mendel draw? So Mendel concluded that when he cross pollinated, when he cross pollinated his seeds or his uh, plants, he found he said that some traits or some some characteristics or some genes are dominant. Some are dominant while others are recessive. He, he certainly made two conclusions, made two conclusions. The first conclusion that an individual, an individual's characteristics are determined by factors that passed from a parent's generation to the next. Yeah. The factors that passed from parent to offspring, these are called Genes. These are called what? Genes. So what are genes? Genes are the factors that passed from the parent to the offspring. From the parent to the offspring. This parent was tall and the other parent was short. Each one, this parent has genes. And that parent has also genes. Each gene, the, the, the gene for height here is tall, is to give the tall characteristic. And the gene of height here is to give the short characteristic. So he said when the offspring are released, those offspring will take these genes from their parents. So this is the first observation or the first conclusion that Mendel's uh, got. Okay, and individual's characteristics are determined by factors that are passed from one parental generation to the next. And these factors that are passed from parent to offspring, this is called what? Genes. And these genes will detect the characteristics, okay, or will determine the characteristics that the individual has. It's okay? Okay. And he said that it's each gene, each gene, can be described by two alleles. By two what? By two alleles. Yani it has varieties. The gene has varieties. For example, this, this is the gene for height. The gene for height. It has variety. It can be tall or can be short. For the bees, it can be tall or short. So I can give it simple. T, capital T for the dominant one, and small t for the recessive one, okay? Or if it's talking about h height, okay? So the gene is described by a variety of alleles. Each of the traits, Mendel studied, was controlled by a single gene, okay? When he talks about the height, if it's controlled by the gene of height, by a single gene, it's okay. This gene occurred in two contrasting varieties, of course, because we are talking about bees, if it's primitive, if it just has two varieties. These variations produce different expressions or forms of the trait, and it will give the characteristic or the trait of height will be either tall or short. Okay, for example, the gene for plant height occurred in the form that produced tall plants and in another form that produced short plants. The different forms of the genes, this is called what? Alleles, this is called what? Alleles, so I can give the gene of the height, this is the gene of the height, it's okay. 
the gain of the height. It can be tall or short. It has two varieties, tall or short. So I can give it the symbol T capital if it's tall and T small if it's short, okay? T capital or T small. T capital if it's tall, T small if it's short. But he found, he also notes that, the another note, but the first notes that Mendel, or the first conclusion that Mendel uh, um, concluded, that he knows now that there is something called genes. These are the factors that uh, uh, transferred or carried from parents to, from parents to offspring, okay? And they are responsible for the characteristics or for the traits, it's okay. And he concluded that this, gene or the gene of these characteristics can be uh, can has different varieties or different forms and the different forms of the genes are called alleles the first notes or the first conclusion is genes and alleles okay this is the first one the second one when he made his experiment by cross pollinating of the two uh, true breeding uh, peas plants parent and parent he found that i had first what, like what we said before, he, it, gave, it, it gave all the offspring are tall, tall and short, all the offspring were tall. But when he did it for the second generation, he crosses the first generation to give the second generation, he found that three are tall and one is short. So the short uh, characteristics three appears again. So he made his second conclusion, his second conclusion, dominant and recessive alleles, dominant and recessive alleles. What are dominance and recessive alleles? This is Mendel's second conclusion, is called principle of dominance, principle of dominance. So the first conclusion was about genes and alleles, and the second conclusion is, was about the principle of dominance, the principle of dominance. This principle states that some alleles are dominant while others are recessive. Some alleles are dominant while others are recessive. Okay? If an organism with at least one dominant allele for a particular form of a trait, so it will exhibit what? The form of the trait. It will dominate, it will give the dominant form. If it has no dominant alleles, only recessive alleles, so it will get the recessive, uh, the recessive trait, okay? For example, again, let's apply on this. When Mendel, again, for the parents, he got one tall parent and one short parent. So the gene here is the, about the, Height, the gene of height, yes? The gene of height, it's either tall or short. And each one of the gene, I can give it to alleles. Tall or TT, here it's tall. It's a pure tall. It, this plant is true breeding, so I will give it T capital and T capital. T capital T uh, is allele describing the dominant characteristics, which is the, to be tall. And here, T small and T small. The T small is the recessive characteristic. That is what, the recessive characteristic, that is T small and T small, to give the short, yes? When this parent was cross-pollinating, cross, uh, he found that all of them were tall. But maybe they are TT or TT, capital T and capital T, or T capital and T small. If they are only T capital and T small, the T capital for the dominant characteristic and the T small for the recessive one. So which one will appear? The dominant one or the recessive one? Hmm. Girls, which one will appear? The dominant, the dominant or the recessive? The dominant. The dominant. The dominant. So it will appear to be tall. Dominant. Of course, yes. It will appear to be tall because tall is the, the dominant, dominant is the dominant characteristics. When he cross plants 
uh, with con contrasting traits that uh, uh, cross plant this first generation to give the second generation. What did he find? This one tall and that one tall. He found that I have four, uh, we had four uh, variations. Three tall and one short. Why? Because if this one is T capital T small and this one T capital T small. So you can have four. This is what we named segregation. This is what we named segregation. I won't show it to you. It's T capital T small and T capital T small. This is the segregation, okay? When these two gametes, gametes means sperm and eggs, okay? These are the gametes, sperm and egg. The sperm of, the, of this generation with the egg of this generation and they will join together during fertilization, okay? What happened? The T capital here will join the T capital here to give what? TT. Either this will be tall or short? Tall in the second generation. Now what about if this, uh, they are at first, please, I'm sorry, these are at first will give the first generation. Okay, I, or, or it's, no, 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 it's the first generation, but it's here, the gametes. We, we yani separate the gametes to be clear for you. T capital, T small, and here is T capital and T small. Segregation means how they are collected together. This T capital will join this T capital to give what? T, T, so it's two. This T capital will join the T small to give T capital T small, T capital T small, yani T capital for the dominant and the T small for the recessive characteristics. If it will be tall or short. It will be tall or short, girls. Tall. 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 Of course. So what about this T small? Short. We'll join this T capital to give what? T capital tall. T small. It will also be tall. Tall. small. tall. So what about this T small? This allele will join this allele. Short. Of small. We'll give it will be T small, T small. It will be short. It will be short, yes. So the recessive characteristic will only appear if it's described by two recessive alleles. If it's described yes. by two recessive alleles. But the combination of two dominant alleles, of course, will give the dominant uh, characteristic. The combination of one dominant allele with one recessive allele will also give okay, the know. characteristic of the dominant, dominant. Uh, the dominant characteristics, okay? So this is the segregation. The segregation is the, how they join together, how they form uh, when the gametes connect together or join together during the fertilization, how they can give uh, the offspring. This is the second generation. So Mendel found that the second generation will contain or, or the recessive characteristics, which is the short characteristics, will reappear again, which was not present in the first generation. Okay, girls? So, from here, he drew his conclusion, two conclusions, he said. The first conclusion is he knows about the genes and the alleles, and he said, and individuals' characteristics are determined by factors that are passed from one parental generation to the next, okay? And we said that these factors that pass from parent to offspring and carry the characteristics, these are called genes. And for each gene, there may be, for a single gene, there may be many varieties. For here in the, uh, in the for the bees, uh, uh, there are two varieties. And for the gene of height, there are two varieties, tall and short. These tall and short, we can name them alleles. The different forms of the gene are called alleles. And we can describe them by capital letter and small letter, okay? And the second conclusion he made is that dominate, dominant and recessive alleles, it's the principle of dominance. The principle states that some alleles are dominant and others are recessive, okay? And the organism, an organism with at least one dominant allele for a particular form of trait will exhibit that form of trait, while an organism with a recessive allele 
allele for a particular form of trait will exhibit that form only when the dominant allele for the trait is not present. Okay? Let's read this.